Jesus in the midst, our present and our future. The first is to enter in the mystery of what Jesus in the midst is, or rather, who he is, because he is a person, not a thing. What does he do in our midst? And in particular, what does he do in the church, amongst Christians and for Christian unity? What happens when he is in our midst? What can happen? What should happen? Jesus in our midst, once Kiara said, is the maximum expression of the spirituality of unity. And in 2004, Kiara said, For a long time now, I've been convinced of something, that living a spirituality of unity has one purpose above all, to make us fit and able to bring about the presence of Jesus in our midst, to generate him, as Paul VI would say, spiritually in the world, as Mary also did physically. I would like us to forget about this question and put ourselves in front of this reality as if it were the first time we heard about it, as if we knew nothing at all. And we are discovering it for the first time with the wonder of a Gen 4 who hears about these things for the first time, so that we can understand from Jesus himself with great clarity what is or better who is Jesus in the midst. Let's look together at St. Luke's Gospel, where there is the story of the disciple at Emmaus. Two young men, two disciples, set out on foot from Jerusalem. They were walking along deep in conversation about all that had happened. At a certain point, someone comes along. It was Jesus, but they did not recognize him. And he asked them, What's the matter? What are you talking about? Why are you so sad? What's wrong? Jesus was concerned for them and they told him, How come you don't know all that's happened in Jerusalem? You must be the only person who doesn't know. Everyone is talking about it. Everyone knows. At first, he scolded them saying, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart and mind. Don't you understand that all this had had to happen because it was already written in the scriptures? And he explained the scriptures to them, showing how all that had happened was already written there and had to come about. Walking on, they reached the village of Ebaus, their destination. And when they got there, Jesus was about to walk on. But they said to him, No, don't go. Stay with us. It's evening. It's dark. Stay with us. Come in with us. Jesus agreed and went in. They sat at the table and it's likely that Jesus blessed the bread, made some sign or did something so that anyway, he broke the bread in front of them and suddenly they realized it was him. And as soon as that happened, he wasn't there anymore. He had disappeared. Now I would like to share some personal memories. In 1964, Chiara came to speak about this very theme, Jesus in the Midst. And when Chiara spoke, I was even more filled with wonder because I realized I was living what she was saying. So when Chiara finished, I wrote a note to thank her. I said how grateful I was and told her about the joy I felt at having had this marvelous experience of the presence of Jesus in the midst. And Chiara gave me the name Emmaus. It was like a flash of light. I understood that this name gave meaning to my whole life. I had met the ideal when I got to know a group of young people who were students at the University of Rome who had Jesus in the midst. So it was Jesus in the midst that had captured me. I was saying that it was the golden thread of my past life and also the present. Jesus was there with us, with the Focalarini, with the others who were living with me at the school and that he was the one teaching us. He was helping us to grow. He was also casting light on my future because I said, from now on, I want to live only so as to be able to have many experiences of Jesus in the midst. I can say that I too have experienced the fruits that the two disciples at Emmaus experienced. It was the master. Did you feel how our hearts burned within us while he was explaining the scriptures? He helped them understand something he brought light. 
There are so many times when I have experienced this light with Jesus in the midst, which helps you understand events, situation, the words of God, His inspirations. He gives new ardor and zeal. The two disciples went straight back to Jerusalem because they wanted to share the news with the others. They had an extraordinary experience. They had met the risen Jesus and they wanted to go and tell everyone. Isn't it the same for us? When we have had this experience, what comes to mind first? Other people. I can tell them. I can talk about it. I can give this experience to all the others. Kiara wrote in 2003, Jesus amongst us is the fullness of joy. He makes the lives of all those who live unity a continuous celebration. We experience joy and certainty as never before and a new kind of peace. Life is full and we possess an unmistakable light so that we know how to go ahead. Why is this? Because Jesus has silently come amongst us who love one another like an invisible brother and his words are fulfilled among us. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Kiara puts the presence of Jesus in the midst as the norm of norms, as the basis for every other rule. This is the basis of the lives for those who are part of the work of Mary in every aspect. Mutual and constant love, that's a part which makes unity possible. That is the gift God gives and brings the presence of Jesus among all. It is the norm of norms, the premise to every other rule. Chiara said that when she went to Loreto, she already had intuition about this. What fascinated her in Loreto? You'll remember she spoke about this several times. Chiara was fascinated by the idea of this house in Nazareth, where Jesus, Mary and Joseph lived together. Three people, two human beings, a man and a woman, who were married and virgin and the Son of God, they lived there together. The starting point for this discovery of Jesus in the midst, right from the early times, was putting mutual love into practice. The commandment of mutual love lived intensely by the first focalarini. This led them onto a path of collective holiness. They wanted to go to God together. Kiara herself talked about it. This is what happened. From the very early days, God set us on a very precise path, the path of love. However, since I was not alone on this path, but was with other focalarini, naturally this path of charity became mutual charity among us. Jesus' new commandment, love one another as I have loved you, became the law of our lives with all the implications that the concept contains within it. And Chiara referred to the image of the two poles of electric current that don't turn a light on until they touch. They must touch before the light comes on, even though the current is already there. What did the first focalarini do? By living mutual love, they turned on the light. They made the light come on, which means they experienced the special grace of the presence of Jesus in the midst of souls united in his name. This is the first point. But let's not forget that Jesus cannot be brought into our midst once and for all. As if we put Jesus in the midst today and tomorrow, we'll find him there in our midst. No, because Jesus is life, he is dynamism. So our personal weaknesses and those of others can diminish love amongst us and therefore stop him establishing his presence in our midst, his dwelling amongst us. Kiara said, we need to establish and re-establish His presence among us through loving, by serving, understanding and sharing the burden, sufferings, anxiety and joys of our brothers and sisters with a love that covers all things, that forgives all things, that is typical of Christianity. Where there is no longer the life of Jesus in the midst, is the light of Jesus in the midst missing? and also the ardor with which he enkindles our hearts and the enthusiasm of the early days? Let's admit it frankly, blaming ourselves first of all for not having been vigilant in loving. So what does Kiara say to us today? She invites us to set aside any kind of activity and re-establish first of all the presence of Jesus in the midst. 
So we need to set off as new every time, anchoring ourselves to the secret to whom we have promised faithfulness to Jesus forsaken. In fact, he is the key to re-establishing unity at all the time. How? Because we need to decide firmly to take on our own shoulders all the crosses and especially the crosses of unity and even more so the crosses of unity that are not perfect. Of the unity that we need to bring to perfection all the time so that the risen Lord can triumph amongst us. Therefore, Jesus forsaken is really the key to every unity. We embrace him in the pain we feel because of the lack of unity which was my fault or someone else. And we launch ourselves afresh to love with his measure of love. Kiara explains how we can love in this way. If I am nothing like Jesus forsaken, if I die to myself, if I am nothing, I am love. But if I am love, I am Jesus. So to have Jesus in our midst, we must have Jesus beforehand, to be dead to ourselves beforehand, to be Jesus beforehand. Then there is mutual love. And when there is mutual love, Jesus is in our midst. If we are united, Jesus is among us. And this has value. It is worth more than any other treasure that our heart may possess. More than mother, father, brother, sister, children. It is worth more than our house, our work, or our property. More than the work of art, in a great city like Rome, more than our business deals, more than nature which surrounds us with flowers and fields, the sea and the stars, more than our own soul. It is he who inspiring his saints with his eternal truths make history in every age. This too is his age, not so much the age of a saint, but of him among us, of him living in us as we build up in unity of love his mystical body and the Christian community. There is no doubt that Jesus is present in his church. There is no doubt that this presence is also amongst people who don't even know each other because it is Jesus who is there. So there is no doubt about it. No one doubts it. But what does not come to light, and this is Chiara's discovery, is that this presence is possible where there are two or three simply where there are two or three. This is the typical fruit of charism. This is the divine and real presence of Jesus that is established between two or more people united by mutual love. Live to the point of unity, whoever they are, beyond differences of any kind, two or more people united by mutual love. Live to the point of unity, whoever and wherever they are. So Jesus is not only in the church, or in the places dedicated to prayer and religion, etc. But wherever these people meet, even in a prison, even in a de-Christianized place, everywhere. If there are two people, two is enough, two or three. The three can include the whole assembly gathered here, but there must be at least two. One on their own is not enough. There must be a community, there must be at least two. Don't you think this is marvelous? Chiara wrote in the statues that movement wants to be continuation of Mary, a continuation of Mary on earth. But what does work of Mary mean? Chiara explained it. Jesus in our midst is the one who ensures that our work is work of Mary. There are works that bear the names of a saint, or of Our Lady herself, or of God. There is Opus Dei, for example, which means work of God, Opus Dei. Why is a movement called the work of Mary? It is called that because of all the work, the task that Mary wants to carry on, doing also through our movement. When Mary was on earth, she did not find a religious order. She did not found a convent. She did not found a movement. She didn't found anything like that. Her work was Jesus. Her work was to give Jesus to the world. That is why Chiara said that Jesus in our midst the effect of unity is not a command. She once told us, I am leaving you Jesus in our midst. And she said, take note of this. He is not a command, not good advice, not an exhortion, nor a concept or rule, 
but he himself a person who lives spiritually among those who are united by love in his name so meeting the focolare movement means let's say should mean if we live his presence well meeting the living jesus this is what we are called to do to give and re-give jesus spiritually to the world like mary gave him physically to be as chiara wrote in the statues a presence of mary and almost a continuation of her one of the effects of his presence among us amongst his disciple is that by attracting and engaging the people we meet into living the gospel this gives life to the community what are the consequences of this life the consequences are peace heaven on earth many families reunite in peace others start their lives with the ideal of at heart once foco wrote we are truly at the start of a new age the age of jesus and all this has come about because our only starting point means and end is jesus jesus in us jesus amongst us this is the christian community however a method is needed and kiara showed us one which is the environmental cells to light fires little fires everywhere she wrote the new configuration or setup we must give to the movement in the world is exactly this to light up fires to let jesus in the midst live everywhere if he the saint is in our midst he will also be in each of us and will infect us with his holiness let's remember what the two disciples at emmaus said we have had that experience we have often had it and realized that jesus was amongst us so like them we too can run go back to society run back to the people we left behind in order to go back to them with this fire in our souls with this joy in our souls we can go and say we too are his witnesses today and we can assure everyone that he is happiness only those who can say that who can say i have seen him i touched him i heard him and savored his presence only people who can talk like that can say they belong to the focolare movement can call themselves kiara's children and say they are part of this movement and this is what we are called to do in the world kiara said there are those who are called to give bread shelter advice instruction or housing what are people who belong to the movement called to do we are called to give joy also with food clothing light with everything but above all to give joy called to make the world smile depending on whether making ourselves one with our neighbors requires giving food drink finding a job for another person in any case we are called to give comfort peace light and especially joy to make the world smile this is a most beautiful vocation and how do we make the world smile by giving the world what it needs most this is of value kiara said we give what is most precious to us the living presence of jesus amongst us who makes us experience the true words of the gospel and remember i am with you always to the end of age i am very happy and grateful thank you truly emos <laughs>